My name's Callum Colvin. I, I am 59 years young and I was born in Glasgow. We'll talk a bit about Scottishness and my first memories of being Scottish. You don't really think about that when uh, you're a child. And my son, my uh, youngest son, saw me once in a kilt and he said to me, uh, Dad, are you Scottish? Like the cheese. I said, yes, son, I am. And so are you. And he went, nah. I, you know, I was born and bred in Scotland. I, I, I did live all over. I was born in Glasgow, but I lived all over Scotland. I went to Dundee to go to art school, and I went to London to do my postgraduate. And it was only then that I actually became fully aware of being Scottish, I, mainly because I was reminded of, reminded of it on a daily basis. How has my pandemic experience been? I have never been so busy in all my life, and not particularly in a good way. The art schools were faced with a massive problem. All art schools are many communities. They're like little planets of people with exciting hairdos. And then suddenly, they're all uh, on their own in crappy little flats dotted around the place. And it was really tough for them, and we were sort of trying to G them through and everything they were looking forward to, the degree show and the kind of accolades and the kind of parties, all of that was taken away from them. I, I'm very proud of the art school I teach in, which is in Dundee. Even, I'm in a hotel here in Dundee. And, um, you know, we, we care about our students in our community. So the, the job suddenly became quite all consuming. It wasn't all bad. Uh, you know, it was nice not to be on the road going to work at the art school. And, I, it was nice to see more of my youngest and my kids who've left home. I, I miss them terribly. I do miss the pub. Don't you know they're talking about a revolution of sound? Like a whisper Don't you know They're talking about a revolution it Sounds like a whisper While they're standing in the welfare lines Crying at the doorsteps of those armies of salvation Wasting time in the unemployment lines Sitting around waiting for a promotion Don't you know Talking about a revolution it sounds like a whisper Poor people gonna rise up and get their share Poor people gonna rise up and take what's theirs Don't you know you better run, 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 run I said you better run, 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 run. Finally, the tables are starting to turn. Talking about a revolution. Cause finally, the tables are starting to turn. Talking about a revolution. Oh no. Talking about a revolution. I've been standing in the welfare lines Crying at the doorsteps of those armies of salvation Wasting time in the unemployment lines Sitting around waiting for a promotion Don't you know, talking about a revolution it Sounds like a whisper Tables are starting to turn. Talking about a revolution. Cause finally the tables are starting to turn. Talking about a revolution. Oh no. Talking about a revolution. Oh no. Do I think my musical tastes are particularly Scottish? 
I don't really know. Um, one of the things that I've been doing recently with music is um, kind of revisiting the stuff that I grew up with. I picking up my daughter from school and I saw a proclaimer across the square in Edinburgh. Which one? I don't know, Charlie or um, Craig or whatever. But it was definitely a proclaimer. It was the first kind of Scottish kind of music coming, certainly coming from that part of the world that, that I kind of seen in that sense. And they were so kind of unusual. I thought about that quite a lot until kind of, I, I don't know, that first album was really kind of fresh and quite remarkable. As an art student at Dundee, uh, Billy McKenzie from the Associates used to drink in the pubs around the art school and he used to come to art school discos and <laughs> amazingly dressed like Frank Spencer from some other pre album, uh, but in a much more stylish way, but the same kit. But it, I saw it then and I thought the Associates were extraordinary and Billy was an extraordinary singer. I think statistically, um, it seems that we are. Men particularly are prone to suicide. I, I don't know why. I honestly, I wish I did know why. It's the saddest thing. I lost a friend to it. it I find it very difficult. I feel I still do to, to understand how a level of despair can quite quickly come upon a person and um, you can't even spot it. I really don't know. It's a mystery. It really is one of life's mysteries. Isn't it? How does Scotland influence my work? At first it didn't at all. And then I went to London and then I started thinking about it. And when I was thinking about it, the first time I ever really thought about it was that I, there was some kind of football game on and I was down. I wasn't going to football. I wasn't interested in football. I saw a pub. I was going to go in. And then I saw a sign and it was no gypsies, no dogs, no Scots. But I began to think about that notion, that othering of the Scots. Uh, and I began to think about that in terms of um, being British and being part of uh, a, a wider project, being part of the United Kingdom. Um, I began to think about my own experience of growing up in Scotland, my own um, participation and a, a sense of... Uh, demeaning my own culture and I began to think what that was about and I thought well that's interesting that's an interesting thing to make work about the way that I work you know you collect objects I, I make photographic artworks I, I make the sets I put objects into them uh, I collect things I have several sheds full of crap and uh, but I collect things on a theme and I put them into the shed and they, they form a kind of visual kind of a thread of thought, a, a kind of symbolic kind of thing. And, um, and then one day they come out of the shed and they go into a picture. And that's kind of how I develop my language. I, and there's lots of Scottish tact that you can rely on. I, you know, I, I, I love listening to Scottish voices, Scottish accents. I love the fact that they're so different across the country. I and mean, in Scotland, there's so many microcosms. It's, it's an extraordinary cult, uh, culture, it's an extraordinary country. And, um, you know, and it's, it's endlessly fascinating, not just the history. Uh, I know I've sort of moved a lot from talking about my pictures, but that's all of the things that, um, that inform the pictures I make. You know, the pictures that I made looking at Charles Edward Stewart and the Jacobites. I was interested in portraiture, I was interested in the interesting history of the portrait artists who, who made the portraits of the Stuart dynasty, mostly in exile in Europe. There was a really kind of interesting kind of subculture of song, uh, poetry, a whole kind of world of stuff that we don't even really talk about because we don't really, in the schools, or something, I never learned a thing about Scottish history. Uh, or Scottish culture, or, or beyond Burns, nothing about Scottish literature, poetry. What am I drinking? I'm drinking um, Pilot Blonde Unfined Beer, uh, which I don't know what that means, unfined, uh, but it's very nice and it's made in Leith. Um, it's delicious.
Uh, certainly through my youth, I was surrounded by people who drank quite a lot, but they were never alcoholics. My parents both drank quite a lot and they were very sociable. I, you know, I, my dad never had a hangover in his life and he could drink whiskey like it was going out of fashion. I don't know, people in London, when I lived there, plenty of things, people drank a lot as well. I think any kind of anywhere that's kind of, it's a bit chilly, you know, the British in general, they were all drunk. Um, they were drink too much, probably. I think people are a lot more health conscious than they were. Um, so I don't really know. I remember my parents used to have parties in the 70s and I, as a kid, I would get out of bed on a Sunday morning and you go down the living room and it would be, be like a litter of beer cans and um, the odd sherry bottle uh, and whiskey bottles, but never wine. Nobody drank wine in the 70s. I wouldn't say that I'm a, a connoisseur of whiskey. I don't think my palate is uh, refined enough. Uh, but I do think Beaumont is, is just about the perfect kind of thing for me. It's a 12-year-old Beaumont. Uh, but again, whiskey, you know, the whiskey, that's powerful stuff. Am I optimistic or pessimistic about the future of my field, my field being Scottish art? It's funny because I think about that, my field has also been photography and that's changed tremendously on a technical basis. I, and the, the notion of the professional photographer kind of gone away, you know, any bugger with a half decent phone is now a photographer. Um, in terms of Scottish art, I think a lot of art is not political, which I've always found odd. And a lot of artists are not interested in politics. And I've never really understood that because politics, to my mind, is part of the, part of the dialogue and stuff like that. And, and the artists who I admired when I was young, like an art student, they were all like Marxists and communists and you know European kind of revolutionaries. Um, and I was amazed, actually, so many um, very good artists in England who I knew were either not interested at all in politics or quite happy to be a conservative. But, you know, I, I tend to hang about with, you know, we're talking about creative people, I hang out about with poets or writers as much as I do with other artists. I, and one of the reasons I like hanging about with poets is that they're interested in politics. They're interested in the things that I'm interested in more than generally speaking, uh, my fellow artists. So, you know, I think I'm out on a limb there. So in that sense, the future of Scottish art, I don't really know because we don't even really know the future of Scotland. When I sell art, when I get commissions, nearly all of them come from beyond Scotland. Um, and that's a kind of curious thing for an artist whose work is seen as very Scottish. So in a way, I try not to think about that and I just follow my own muse and I, you know, I, that's all I can do. I'm over a certain age. I'm not going to change that much. <laughs> I'm just going to carry on making my pictures and doing my thing. And uh, so the future is just, we just get by. An artist will get by. You know, the, the students that I have, um, uh, Duncan Jordanson, are, they're amazing. They're brilliant. I, I, and will any of them go on to be hugely successful? Who knows? Some of them certainly will. Some of them will do other things. Um, I've given up trying, trying to figure that one out. In 10 years' time, would I see Scotland? Well, you think about that and you turn on it and say, where was Scotland 10 years ago? Uh, and a, a remarkable amount has changed. You know, on the, the broadest political spectrum, Scotland is either going to be independent or it's not. I read an awful lot of stuff where people say uh, Scott, uh, the uh, pendulum has swung and it's swung so far that Scotland is inevitably going to be an independent country. Uh, I don't necessarily believe that. Um, I think if um, Scotland was to be let go so easily, it would have been let go before. I, I think the day we run out of oil will make a difference. And Scotland is a remarkable country and one of the most remarkable things about it is we have had a staggering wealth of oil and we still manage to end up with food banks. Uh, it's a country that can inflict that upon itself. It's capable of inflicting any form of misery upon itself. Uh, I don't want to be too pessimistic about that, but I think there's a strong chance we will, in 10 years' time, we will be arguing about when we're going to have another independence referendum. 
one song to add to the playlist that's not there for me would be the joyful Kilmarnock Blues by the Proclaimers. I know the Proclaimers are there, but I am a great, I'm very fond of that first album. I'm not going to talk about Patrick Confusion On a night when I could see with my shot I'm not going to talk about Patrick Confusion One song to remove I have to say that I do have a bit I struggle a little bit with Take That or Pack Thon as they say in other people I've never been back And now, the weather. My name is Chris Cormack, I'm from Portree the Sky, and I'm down in the outskirts of London just now in a isolation hotel for a fortnight. Slightly overcast, 10 degrees, mild. I would much rather be in the sky today, yep, for sure. <laughs> 